Hello everyone, so in this video uh, we are unboxing a light box um, particularly uh, designed for the Aptor um, LED video lights so this one is, I think, I believe they just released it it's the Aptor uh, Light Octodome light box 120 uh, so we're just gonna open up the packaging and take a look see what, it, what the construction quality looks like and I am actually going to put this onto the current video light that I'm using, which is the Aptor LS300D2. Um, right now, uh, I'm using the, the Aptor Lantern box, uh, which actually illuminates all the surrounding areas um, that, you know, makes, a, makes for a very even illumination and uh, in return actually produces a very even lighting for any time that I need to sit here and make a video review. Uh, the light box uh, in you know the light box actually works slightly different because it projects the light sources um, very directionally so with that said um, I'm gonna try I'm gonna actually install the light box onto the uh, onto the light and we're gonna compare the differences between using a light doom and using a light box all at the same power settings and see uh, which one might uh, be better suited for your video production needs uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Should be pretty straightforward. So it actually shipped directly to me in the Aptura light, in the Aptura box. And inside here you have a you have a carrying case, um, very nice, very soft. I also have a carrying case um, that the Aptura gave me. Um, this is the. This is a light box for the uh, the, the, the lantern, uh, which comes in this box. It's slightly better design, I feel like, uh, for the uh, light uh, for the light for the lantern compared to for this little box. It's slightly slimmer and smaller uh, without any paddings. This one even has some foam paddings inside. So just a comparison in terms of quality. Uh, this light box costs also very affordable. A hundred thirty nine dollars. So, let's see what comes in the box. You have your diffuser screens, white colored. Um, you have a grid. This looks like a grid. And you have your uh, the mount for Bowen compatible lights. It's uh, fairly light. You have some extra diffusers for inside the light. Instructional manual. And the the octa, octagon light box itself looks like this. Very very compact. I'm actually surprised by how small this light box you know package is, especially it comes in you know this small bag, uh, not padded. The previous light box that I bought for the lantern is actually padded. Feels better quality than this one. Uh, so, let's see what everything is in here. And I would assume the usability is going to be very similar to many other light boxes. Uh, but this one, right off the bat, I can already see that there are a lot of holes over here that I'm, sub I'm assuming you're going to be having to connect all, the, uh, all, the, all of those into the holes right there. That might take some time. Hopefully they designed the light box in a way that is very easy to apply and install. So the additional light baffle. The baffle looks to be in a wrong shape. And this is the actual size of the um, of the front of the light box, uh, 120. I don't really know what that means, but it seems to be uh, bigger than the uh, lantern that I have currently. And what's this? So 
So interestingly, those two looks actually are very similar. And this one is, um, it's got a slightly different material compared to this one. This one where it feels more like paper. Uh, this one more feels plasticky with kind of a, uh, like a rubbery texture uh, on one side of the light box. So I don't really know, it could be diffusing lights slightly differently uh, for those two, but it's, it's nice that they actually included two different kinds of diffusers uh, for the light box. All right, so let's take a look at the instructional manual. Uh, I'm gonna come back and have the light box assemble because I feel like it might take a little, a little while assembling every hole over here. There are like more than, there are 16 holes in here. So I would assume there are maybe 16 of those sticks over here. All right, so it looks like this, you guys see. Um, and if you expand it, it actually, halfway, it looks like a fan, but if you expand it all the way, it looks like a giant dome. Very, very nice. It's actually much bigger, much bigger than I thought, okay? The material, the reflective material in here is, um, is fairly well constructed, feels very heavy duty, and it's pretty thick compared to some of the cheaper ones that I've used, uh, you know, that I, I, I bought from Amazon and returned, those just feels horrible, but this one just feels very well constructed in terms of construction quality. And each of those spines, um, you have a little uh, rod in here. The rod looks universal. The two sides are um, similar, so I don't think you can mess it up by putting it in um, the wrong way. But this is what the rod looks like. And you have to align it into two different kinds of like little areas so it actually goes in and sits into the, the, the light box properly, like this, okay? So again, I have a limited area. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and we'll take a look what it looks like when, when the installation is finished. All right, guys, so I got the light box installed. Uh, as you can see, this is actually significantly larger, um, at least for the front output compared to the lantern which again is a 360 degree uh, kind of diffuse light. So um, installation is, is a hassle. It takes quite long to install, but um, I would assume if you get used to it and you have a pair of gloves always ready, you can get this installed and disassembled out in less than 10 minutes if you get used to how to install it. Um, but again, as I said, it's a hassle compared to a lot of quick release that even Optura is, is putting out for some of their other high-end uh, light boxes. So yes, in a sense, um, this might give you a great value in terms of light output quality, uh, but you're gonna sacrifice on um, the ease of installation for sure. Um, and also I showed you guys the light baffle inside. It was, it more feels like an afterthought than a well-designed light baffle you know, holder over there uh, with just a whole bunch of Velcros. The, the front diffuser um, is actually very easy to install. Uh, pretty much Velcro it all the way. And now, uh, just want to show you guys what it looks like right now with my uh, lantern. And just take a note of the light, how the light is shining on the background and shining on my skin. Uh, now we can actually switch it. We're gonna use a similar um, position, which is right at the center behind the video, um, behind the camera, and then we'll see if anything changes or if the light bulb gets more powerful or if it gets reduced. And again, keep in mind, this is a 1.5 stop, um, the diffuser in the front. Okay, so see you guys in a few seconds. All right, guys, so this is with the actual um, Octadome 120 uh, from Aptour. What do you guys think? Uh, did it actually improve the light quality? Because um, I feel like because the light box is uh, enclosed and uh, the reflective material is very nice inside, I feel like it actually increased uh, the exposure value quite a lot. I didn't change my manual exposure for the video, which I believe I left it at 
um, 60ths of a second f 5.6. That was the initial setup that I used for the um, when I used the light dome or the lantern. And now it is the Octodome light bulbs. Um, personally, I feel like the light quality is actually definitely better because it's a very flat front diffused light. Um, I don't have any spill out uh, besides where the light was hitting. But um, it will be interesting because I'm gonna soon put up the the grid to actually make the light more focused and see if there's any difference in terms of the light output and see if it actually would modify the, um, the large diffuse area of the light. So again, take note, this is with 1.5 stop diffuser. Next, we're gonna use 2.5 stop diffuser and see if the light um, or if the, if the area gets a slightly darker with, with that diffuser and what it looks like in terms of shadow quality. All right guys, so this is with the 2.5 stop diffuser. Um, I feel like it has gotten one stop darker compared to the last setup. Um, but just from the preview of the screen, it actually looks like, I feel like the setting is actually works pretty good for uh, portrait um, you know, illumination purpose. I think my skin tone looks pretty good in this instance. And uh, my lantern is still here. So yeah, just uh, take a note at the, the illumination differences and you can make a educated judgment or decision on whether you should buy this light box or not. So far, I'm actually impressed by the light quality or the light output from this light box. The only thing I'm not impressed is the assembly process. My hand still hurts from trying to install that for the last, you know, half an hour or so. But light output is, is definitely much better modulated, uh, better, higher output compared to the lantern uh, for a concentrated area. And you also have multiple options to actually modify your light output with a 1.5 stop diffuser, a 2.5 stop diffuser, a light baffling sight, as well as a grid, which we're gonna try out next. Um, I'm just gonna put the grid on the 2.5 stop because I would assume if you want to use grid, you want a more uh, dramatic light output with slightly, slightly darker scenes, right? Okay, so I'm not gonna change this to 1.5, I'm just gonna use the grid directly on top of 2.5. See if the um, illumination would change or it would actually get the illumination more smaller, have more vignetting effects on the background, um, and so on, okay? So, um, yes, I am uh, actually at this point impressed by the light output quality. All right, guys, so this is with the grid installed. Um, the grid actually is pretty much focused on the center area. Uh, I would assume there is quite a lot of light fall off on the background, uh, mainly because, again, the grid is just pretty much centering the light at the, at the focus point. Uh, you'll see the different shadow cast on the, uh, the lantern as well. Before, uh, I'm using the grid, it's still fairly nicely illuminated, and now you can see more of the shadows and shapes um, of the lantern on the side. Uh, so yes, it definitely have its purpose of using that grid and it actually is very easy to attach right in front of the soft, uh, soft diffuser. Um, the Velcro area on the edge of the Light Doom or Octa Doom 120 is pretty thick. So you want to, when you, in, when you want to use a grid, you want to actually have the diffuser slightly recessed uh, on the Velcro area and then put your grid at the front of, of the edge of, of the actual of, a, of the actual box and uh, that, that's pretty much it um, would I actually replace the lantern with the actual soft box uh, of the Octodo? Uh, I would say yes at this point on I'm actually going to be using uh, the Octodo because again preliminary uh, results it just seems like the light quality is much much better I can use less power to produce the same amount of light because of the extra reflection material inside uh, compared to the lantern, which actually wastes um, over, I would say over 60% of the light to the other areas that I actually never gonna be using or recording in the video. Um, 
Would the lantern still serve its purpose? Absolutely. If you're doing some production level work and you want the entire area to be illuminated, uh, the lantern is definitely a great option. And also as a run and gun kind of setup, you can quickly set this up in less than one minute compared to if you want to use the Octodoom, uh, which have better light output, but it's going to take forever to set up um, for any kind of on-location shoot. But I think for my purpose, um, the lantern is going to retire uh, and it's going to be reserved for on-location shoots from this point on. And I'm going to continue to use the brand new Aptor Octodoom Lightbox 120. Okay. Um, yes, thoroughly impressed. The pros, very consistent light output, um, lots of light modulation options, and it's very, very affordable at $140. Uh, the quality, the construction quality is, is fantastic. Um, they cheap out on some of the areas like the light baffle design and how the things are mounted. And also they didn't use a quick release material or the quick release mechanism, which I think actually adds to the cost. Uh, if you want those, you can certainly pay more for a quick release light box um, that suits your purpose. But I think if you're on a budget, this is uh, definitely one of the better light sources, light modulation options that you can get, not only for Aptour uh, video lights, but any other lights that use Bowen mount. Uh, this is a fantastic option. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, I am not paid by Aptour to do this video review. Um, I'm thoroughly impressed for the value that I'm getting. Um, again, questions, comments, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching my video. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.